Hello there, Libras. Welcome. I feel really horrible doing your reading last, um, especially when, you know, we're just coming out of your birthday. So I apologize for the delay, the major, major delay with your reading, okay? Um, I hope you can forgive me, and I hope the reading is still helpful for many of you as you navigate the month of November. I feel like the keyword, the theme for this month is it's a two-way street. Everything is a two-way street relationships, work, it's an ex equal exchange of energy. Whatever we put in is what we're going to get out. If we choose to coast, we're going to shortchange ourselves, you know, by the end of the day or at the end of our lives. Or if we choose to take it easy and just coast and not put all our all into something, we're going to start to see that that one thing is just never going to bear fruit. So I feel like for you, it's a two-way street. And then I'm also sensing as well, for many of you, uh, there's this element here about, you know, um, trying to fit somebody into a mold that is not, that, that doesn't fit them. So it's almost like idealizing a situation, wanting this perfect ideal, and then nitpicking, like, you know, pick cherry picking, picking and choosing uh, items, people, situations to fit into that idyllic image. Even though it's clearly not working, I feel like you're still working hard at it. And I feel like that's going to end up with a little bit of disappointment, you know, come this month. Okay, so if you've been doing that, I'm sensing there's going to be some major eye-opening moments and some major disappointments coming through where the, the moles are going to break mainly because it's restricting, it's confining, and it's not the right thing. Okay, so um, just be careful about that. I'm sensing for some of you too, it's almost like um, in the work front, I feel like you're working under somebody or somebody is like uh, um, always looking at you or looking at your work and appraising you. So it's like somebody who's um, measuring what you're doing or observing what you're doing. And then they take like notes. Um, it could be mental notes or it could be like physical notes. They're evaluating you. They're judging you. They're grading you. And so show them that you're working hard, okay? You can bluff it if you need to. Make sure you're constantly doing something, okay? So don't just um, sit back and, you know, chit-chat with coworkers or prevent coworkers from do doing their work because all of these things are being noted by that person. I feel like for some of you, that person is a darker skin. Darker skin, um, someone who's very... Um, very very stoic like someone who's very quiet they're they're very unassuming but they're smart and they're going to be looking at your progress they're going to see if you're slacking off and they're going to monitor everything like obsessively monitor everything that you're doing so you need to you know show them how serious you are about your job you need to show them what you're doing you need to you know Keep running around, keep yourself busy so that it reflects well on your performance because I feel like things that you're doing are being heavily, you know, noted, okay? So that's just coming in as a warning, especially for those of you who are going through some type of preliminary training period or probationary period at your work or you're doing a trial for something and somebody's really judging your performance. I'm also feeling as well uh, when it comes to relationships and going back to relationships, it's it's almost like I'm, I'm feeling, you know, something, there's something that you're dissatisfied with, okay? And instead of just admitting it to yourself, like, is this all? Is this the right relationship partner for me? Is this like the, the be all and end all? Am I going to be satisfied, content, 100% happy with this person? I feel like you have some doubts. I feel that you have some doubts. And um, I feel like these doubts are growing. It's like snowballing day by day. And I feel like you're still at a point where you're kind of like in self-denial. And you're just like, oh, it's fine. It'll work. You know, we'll get married and things will be better. Or we'll have children and then things will be better. Or we'll move in together and things are going to be better. Well, not really, mainly because if we are in confined space with another person, like, you know, in sharing space, let's sharing living quarters, living together. And then on top of that, if we bring another child into the picture or another person into the picture, the relationship 
it needs to be strong first before it can withstand these important milestones. So I feel like there are some things that you need to be really honest with yourself about. There are some things that you're kind of starry-eyed, you're idealistic about, and I feel like deep down in the back of your mind, it's nagging at you. And this is the month where you need to set the record straight, where you need to, you know, be a little bit more honest with yourself, I feel. And um, I feel like, you know, the past few times that I've done readings for you, things are, it, it just feels like I'm being harsh, but I'm not. I feel like, you know, there are a lot of things that you're kind of on the fence about. And there are a lot of things that you really need to be very, very decisive about. And this process about should I or shouldn't I, it's taking up so much of your time and it's really preventing you from making any type of concrete actions. So I see a lot of, you know, like um, loss of momentum in this spread already. And so they're really telling you, you know, where am I lying to myself? What do I need to do so that I can, you know, just move ahead so that I can be free, so I can be a lot more happy, so I can even start over. So I feel like there are major readjustments that you're afraid to make. And that's okay. We still have, you know, another month of this year left in December. So hopefully things will change around or turn around for the better. And hopefully you will be inspired and you will feel like it's the right time to make this move. Okay. So let me talk about this first. And um, it's something that needs to be discussed heavily. Okay. This is a family here. So whenever we have like, you know, multiple cards, uh, court cards of the same suit is usually some type of a family situation. Okay, so we have here Knight of Wands, somebody who's being very, very reckless, evasive with their responsibilities. They kind of go through life um, as an adrenaline junkie, you know, like um, act first, ask questions later. We have the Queen of Wands, which is like the matriarch of the family, somebody who's trying to settle down, trying to stabilize his or her life, trying to do the right thing, trying to take care of everybody. And then we also have here the Page of Wands, which is like um, a younger energy that's very attention seeking, gets into trouble, um, evasive when it comes to responsibilities and somebody who's not very truthful. There are some family issues creeping into the picture for this month. If you have family members that are fire signs, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising, but either way, I feel like this is a family situation where he says this, she says this, and then we don't really know who to trust. And I also feel like for some of you, there is, um, it, it feels to me like there is either a patriarch or a matriarch at stake who's trying to decide, um, you know, like who, who has like some money and they're trying to decide, like they, they might have inheritance, they might have physical property, like assets, cars, houses, uh, land, um, stocks, bonds, and then they might have just actual physical money and they're trying to decide among their children, who should I give this money to? And I feel like everyone is scrambling for this one person's attention. And this one person is um, thinking more about the younger generation. So, for example, if it's a grandma that you're dealing with and you're just like, why did she just overlook me? You know, does she not like me? It's not because of that. It's because she's thinking more about the younger kids and whether or not they have enough. So I feel like there is this energy here about everybody scrambling for a fixed piece of the pie and it can create a lot of tension in the relationships between the children. It can create a lot of tension in the relationship between that family dynamics. So I do see a lot of people in uh, blended families dealing with step parents, step siblings, step children, and you know, they're misbehaving, right? but people are misbehaving but it's almost like the your role because it's it's complicated you know with blended families everyone's role is very um it's not clearly defined so on the one hand you feel like i should do this i should you know put these people uh in their place but you feel like it's not really your place and you don't want to step on anybody's toes 
And then likewise, you could be a father, you know, dealing with rambunctious children. And I, I'm sensing there's a, also, you know, movement, like wanting to change house, wanting to change location, wanting to do all of these things. But you might have, you know, share custody and you can't really make a move. So it's very frustrating. It's very family oriented. And the family unit is incredibly unstable. It seems like there are too many people involved, too many mothers, too many um, children, too many fathers, too many, uh, too much energy contained in a very, very small environment. Tempers are flaring. And I also feel as well, for those of you um, who are not dealing with this in terms of blended families, I feel like you're trying to change your location, but there are restrictions. So there, you could be locked into a lease. Um, you might have roommates and they're not ready to move when you're ready to move. And so you're waiting on decisions. You're waiting on things to finalize. You're waiting for somebody to give you a green light. And there is movement happening. People moving in, people moving out. And there's logistical uh, concerns that needs to be worked out when it comes to the housing situation. So already I'm seeing a lot of that and I believe I forgot the, the placement. I believe this was here and then this was here. Sorry if I'm um, misplacing them, okay? So there are a lot of things here. I believe it's like this. Yeah. So sorry, Libras. So there are a lot of things here that denotes to me like your sense of um, stability when it comes to your own foundation, where you need to be, uh, who's there for you, where is home? Where can you feel safe? Where can you feel, you know, loved and needed and wanted? All of these things are security oriented issues are, it's a major theme for this month. It's a major, major theme. And so I feel like, you know, a lot of the times Libra, I feel like you don't really emphasize or you don't really place enough importance on how your free will affects situation. And uh, with Aquarius, you know, they're so adamant about exerting their free will in their environment to try to change things. And they do it in a very dogmatic way. So their, their energy is like all over the spread. And then I don't know how Geminis do it. I'm not very familiar with the way that they act, but uh, I feel like with Geminis, they know how to navigate, you know, the human interactions in order to get what they want. They know how to navigate those things and they're very observant. So they know who to avoid, who to ask for help. But usually they do ask other people for help in order to get where they need to go. And they're very, very good and, um, you know, diplomatic about that. Um, whereas for you guys, I feel almost like what will be will be what other people decide that's what i'm going to go with so rather than exercising you know your own free will staying ahead of the curve and really going out and kind of like making these decisions on your own i feel like this spread is more about inaction it's about lack of activity lack of momentum lack of free will lack of like accountability and i don't like to see this for you guys I've seen it for a few months and I don't like this energy because when we lack accountability and decisions are made for us and then, you know, f a few months down the line, we're not where we need to be. We blame other people. We blame other actors. We blame our circumstances on other things rather than taking accountability for our own actions and for getting us where we need to go. So I feel like that's the recurring theme here. And so once again, you really need to exercise your free will. You need to be a little bit more proactive, you know, about what do I need to change in my life? What areas am I not happy with? Is it the living situation? It very well could be here with the four of wands. Is it the family unit? Family is definitely supportive, but they're really, they're coddling you, they're babying you, they're treating you almost like children who can't, you know, take care of yourself. And that energy can really hold you back from becoming the person that you're meant to be. You know, if they're like constantly, oh, it's okay, or it's not your fault, 
you become you embody that energy where you go into the world and you feel like you can't you're you're like behind the curve or behind your peers when it comes to doing things and you're also you know called oh so much where you're behind the curve when it comes to taking accountability of your actions taking care of yourself being independent being strong being able to you know get yourself out of trouble so if someone constantly comes to our rescue right they're not really allowing us to critically think our way out of danger, think our way out of trouble. They're not really allowing us an opportunity to exercise our own free will, our own critical thinking skills. So I feel like that's what's really happening here. On the one hand, family is a great support system, but on the other hand, it's preventing you from being you. It's really downplaying your own sense of individuality. And I feel like this collective energy, it's like, Everyone is, you know, loyal to one person. Everyone does what that one person says, possibly a very strong matriarch in the family. And no one is able to take care of themselves. No one is able to stand up and say, no, you're wrong, even when the person is wrong, because there's some fear here. There's some herd, like bandwagoning type of energy, I feel, in this spread. So let me just um talk about you know let's look behind that energy and talk about the individual spread okay or, or i'm sorry the individual cards so this is overall about wealth generating wealth doing things so that we can become very independent this is the independent woman or man because the cards are not gender um they're they're not gender specific so this is kind of like what can we do in order to create wealth for ourselves, in order to be independent, to, to be able to take care of ourselves, to be able to, you know, have the leisure time and not be a slave to money, not have, uh, not be so insecure about our job, where our job is going to take us, whether or not we're going to lose our job. And when it shows up in the reverse position, I feel like you're at a point where you understand how important it is. You're looking at other people that have all of these things, you know, that, that have that stability. And you're just like, I want to be like that. And you're also looking at people who are very, very materialistic. They have a lot of wealth. They have a lot of uh, prosperity. But they're not very happy. And so you're looking at both sides of the story or both sides of the equation. And you're just like... How do I reach that middle ground? How do I have enough without being a slave to money? So I feel like there are major themes here about, you know, wanting to be self-employed, wanting to really looking into how can I make money work for me? How can I, you know, um, have control over the work that I do so that I'm not under, I'm not constantly under somebody's supervision, somebody else's watch. And I'm not able to exert my independence. So I feel like many of you are flirting with big ideas here about, you know, self-employment, which is very, very good. Um, I feel like the problem, though, coming into the picture is this, the Page of Wands. People telling you that you can't really do it, you know, like the naysayers. But also, it almost seems to me like whatever it is, whatever plans you have, whatever thing that you're trying to implement, the market seems to me to be saturated with the same people, the same industry. It feels to me like there are too many players. How am I going to be able to stand out? And so one thing you might want to look into, and I know I say this a lot in the readings, and I'm, uh, it seems like very flippant, but I don't mean it to be flippant. Change your geographical location. If this is something you're passionate about and you feel like you have something to offer, but the market where you are in your vicinity is just saturated, change your location. Figure out where you can go so that you have that little pocket where you can make it your own. If you strongly feel you have something to offer, take the steps, you know, be a little bit daring, be a little bit gutsy, and take that first step because I feel like you're contemplating, but you're not, you know, thinking, thinking, but you're not really making a move here. And you do have some good ideas. You do have some good ideas. Um, what comes through here with the Seven of Swords is um, I do feel like there has been some type of um, 
evasive energy when it comes to your work environment. It's under a pentacles card, okay? Some people might have recently left the work environment and they left with a lot of unanswered questions. Um, they left with a lot of cases, uh, workloads hanging. They left with a lot of unanswered questions. They left mainly because they saw all the inefficiencies in the work environment. And you're kind of wondering, like, well, why did they leave? If they left, you know, it, I feel like it's somebody that you really looked up to, you really admired. And I have here a fire sign. So this is a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Someone spirited, someone fair, someone who um, has a really good heart, you know, helps you when you need help. Someone who doesn't abuse their power. So I feel like you had a coworker or a supervisor or somebody that you really admire. And they left mainly because they're not happy. They have a lot of skills. They have a lot of things that other things that they can do. So I feel like they're scanning the horizon and they're looking for more. And so their presence left a little bit of a vacuum and it also makes you feel like, well, if they left, maybe I should leave too. But you also have to understand their reason for leaving is going to be different from you. So if you're following in their footsteps and trying to, you know, create an opportunity for yourself to leave, is that really the right thing to do? Do we follow in other people's footsteps or do we carve a path for ourselves? Okay. So I feel like they left because of some things that they anticipate will happen in the future. And you're trying to figure out what that is. And so you're feeling very, very unstable in the current work environment. And then on top of that, if you have currently a very strong supervisor who's like monitoring your every step and they're seeing you like this, you know, rather than, you know, building wealth, they're seeing you like this where you're not focused, you're scattered, or you're not really contributing equally the same way that other people are contributing. You want to be very careful, okay? So I feel like you have a no-nonsense type of a supervisor or a new boss in the picture, and they're taking notice of everything. So what I mentioned before. And the last thing that I want to end up with here is I feel once again that energy about trying to fit people in the mold and trying to, um, you know, like seeing the best in somebody. Someone who's um, not right for you, who's a little bit flaky, not as dependable. They're very sexy and exciting and they can be, you know, a source of excitement in your life. But I feel like you're trying to put them into a mold. You're trying to fit them into this group, this category where they don't really belong. And they're not going to stay around forever. So I feel like there's this cycle about you going back to it and then being sorely disappointed because being sorely disappointed and also growing a little bit resentful of the other person, but they didn't ask to be put in that position. So there are a lot of things here that we need to really re-examine and I feel like it's a lot deeper than the surface. And I also feel like this collective energy, you know, is it really hurting you or is it appropriate for you? On the one hand, it brings about harmony and it brings about people. It brings about friendships and, you know, everyone's on the same page. But is it also hindering your individual development? Is it also hindering your ability to think and act on your own? Because I feel like that's what's happening. So don't worry about what other people expect from you. Try to do the right thing. Don't try to appease other people. Do what you want and stand up for what you believe in, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, I was telling the other sign, Libras, um, I'm so sorry for the delay with your reading. I had to move, and um, it's a last-minute move that I didn't anticipate. So I had a lot of things on my plate, and that's why the reading is late. I'm not going to do the mid-month reading. I'm going to try to conserve energy and, you know, try to publish the December reading on time so that you guys are not last, okay? So I am very, very sorry. Please forgive me. I still hope the reading is helpful, okay? And uh, I apologize if it sounds a little bit harsh. Um, I just feel like there are a lot of things here that we need to kind of fix in order to prepare ourselves for the new, you know, the new year in 2018, okay? So take care of yourself, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next month. Bye-bye.